Hello and welcome to my talk about nonlinear optimization algorithms in Julia for GPUs. This is a follow-up talk to last year's talk, Modeling in Julia at Exascale for Power Grids. Uh, this talk last year went around our ECP project and um, how we plan to scale up to Exascale using Julia. Now there have been a lot of changes which mainly evolve, revolve around GPU, which we'll, I will go into in a few moments. And uh, these uh, meant a lot of changes in our project. This work is done by Adrian, who has a long experience in power systems and has also contributed uh, to the solve of a PETSI. And uh, myself, uh, I have a background in automatic differentiation. Our group at Argon uh, revolves mostly around optimization. The upcoming supercomputers will uh, mostly rely on GPUs. And that's a surprise since that was not planned that way. It was only planned that uh, half of the systems would support GPUs and the other one would be more multi-core. So that means if you want to make use of these machines efficiently, we have to make use of the GPUs. And this also had consequences for our project. Our project revolves around power systems, which are modeled uh, as a flow problem in a graph, you have sinks, you have sources, the sources are the generators, the sinks are, is the demand and the consumption. And uh, we simulate one uh, such uh, power flow and we want to have the optimal power flow, so the most cost efficient one, so that you use your generation in the most cost efficient way. And we parallelize over the number of contingencies, which means our network under normal operation has to account for the fact that a generator might go down and the system has still to be operational if one generator or line goes down. Now with renewable energies, we have less inertia in the network, which uh, increases uh, uncertainty and also uh, calls for more accurate models. Power system models are a complex network class of problems. Other examples is traffic, internet, pipelines. And uh, the main feature is that the connection is irregular and the problems tend to be uh, to have a high condition number in the underlying solvers. So what we actually solve per, um, per uh, power flow uh, is per case is the optimal power flow. So the most cost efficient way of generating power. So the, cost ge the power generation goes uh, into the cost function and has some parameters associated with each, each generator. Then we have the Kirchhoff laws uh, of a flow problem. So what flows in must flow out. And we have the line limits. And these line limits tend to be the hard part of the problem. They are inequalities, whereas the Kirchhoff laws are equalities. Uh, these pro the, the optimal power flow has a long history of solving. And um, from the 50s or 60s, it started out by uh, being simulated as a linearization. So you solve actually a DC power flow and, uh, um, yeah, and find the optimum of that. That's actually still what is being used nowadays in the industry. Now we use AC power flow that makes the functions non-linear. And uh, interior point is currently the state of the art. So what you do is uh, the inequalities move into the cost function and become these barrier functions, which make the underlying linear system that you solve at each Newton iteration even worse conditioned. The de facto standard solver for solving this uh, problem is IPOPT. It's also used in JUMP for uh, uh, NLPs. Um, the condition uh, of the linear underlying linear system can be really high, like 1 to the 16 for larger cases. Um, IPOPT requires an indefinite sparse direct inertia revealing solver. And uh, that is actually hard to find uh, one on a GPU. Uh, IPOPT only supports direct solvers uh, because direct solvers are usually better if you have uh, very bad conditioning. The exception is uh, Padiso, so you can switch on the iterative solver and actually for large ca cases is indeed, it indeed does not converge. The default solver is MUMS. Uh, we use the HSL library uh, with their solvers MI27 and MA57. Uh, these uh, tend to be best if you have, uh, as I said, uh, hard problems. There are two parallel solvers, PIPs and LP. 
and high up, uh, so they are distributed parallel, that's how we wanted to scale up. So PIPs NLP was what I presented last year, uses a sure complement to parallelize in a distributed way. And uh, now we have, a, it's a, yeah, it was developed at Argon by Cosme and Petra, and now we have the, uh, we are developing in our project the high up solver, which is a mixed dense bar solver. And as you can imagine, this mixed dense part is crucial because that means that uh, uh, the dense part can be solved on the GPU and the sparse part will be solved on, uh, on, on the CPU. So you can offload something to the GPU. Now this is what I also presented last year. So this is the first stage is the power grid under normal operation, the optimal power flow, and then you have to protect against all the contingencies, which are scenarios. So this problem is solved in a distributed way as a two-stage optimization problem. We use StructJump, so we had Jump as a modeling uh, framework. We modeled our grid in Jump and then uh, the derivatives and everything was being passed to our uh, solver pips. And unfortunately, that way is now blocked since Jump has no direct support out of the box for GPUs. And also Julia lacks official support at least, or, and especially a year ago for Intel and AMD GPUs. So that's why we had to change in our project and uh, distinguish between the critical path and the more high risk path. Now Julia is only in the high risk path and for the critical path, we actually go all C++ and use high up as our solver. But we have written a Julia interface for high up. So to, in order to do prototyping in Julia and you can call uh, high up from Julia, but you don't make use of this mixed dense sparse structure. So you don't necessarily make use of the GPU. So what we then want to look into is what if we would start from scratch and would develop an optimization solver specifically for GPUs in Julia? What can we leverage from Julia and from the GPUs? To make that, we simplified our problem first, but wanted to keep the same core components. So we made out of our optimal power flow a power flow problem. This actually kicks out the cost function and the line limits. So the power flow problem actually just gives you the state of your system. So it, will, it shows you a solution of your system given that the Kirchhoff's laws are fulfilled. So this then is a system of nonlinear equations, but we still have to use the same core components. We still have a Newton algorithm. We still have to provide the Jacobian and we still have to have a linear solver that runs on the GPU. As a res reference implementation, we use MatPower in, uh, in MATLAB. So our goal is to compute the Jacobian using automatic differentiation and see how we can extrapolate that to the optimization later. Uh, see what we do about the linear solver. So we probably want to go towards an iterative solver since that is what you should use on the GPU, it scales better. So we implement the preconditioner and a Krylov method on the GPU. The main loop of the computation of the Newton iteration should all run on the GPU. No data transfer should take place from host uh, to the device. Uh, all should be written in Julia, no external calls if possible. So let's go to automatic differentiation. Here's a simple newton raphson You uh, compute the Jacobian, you solve that linear system, you get the next step, you update your x, and then you iterate until f of x is zero, and then you have solved essentially your uh, linear system, uh, jx equals zero. So what we need automatic differentiation for is to get the Jacobian. Essentially what automatic differentiation does, it transforms your code from computing f of x to computing the Jacobian. There are two modes in automatic differentiation, the adjoint and the tangent. The adjoint is uh, uh, very hot at the moment because it's uh, used in machine learning and um, in, the, in, the, in the back propagation there. So you have essentially two functions that you can implement in automatic differentiation, the Jacobian transposed times a vector or the tangent, the Jacobian times a direction. The adjoint vector you usually use when the number of inputs is very high compared to the number of outputs and the tangent model you use when the number of uh, inputs and outputs are equal or even the number of inputs is lower than the number of outputs. In our case, they are equal. And uh, so we go for the forward model for our case. Um, 
still, the size of the Jacobian grows very fast uh, with the increase uh, in size of the system, so with the increase of the number of buses. So we have to somehow uh, make that faster, and what we do is what is called Jacobian coloring. So this is implemented in Sparstiff tools. We use the greedy algorithm there. And we compress our Jacobian uh, either by row or by column, depending on whether you are using adjoint or tangent. We use the tangent mode here. So we ended up with a Jacobian that has only C columns, where C is the number of colors. So that way, when you compute the full Jacobian, you only have to call your ID function, the tangent function, only number of color times and not number of input times. So the complexity goes down to the number of colors times the original function evaluation of f. And our system is indeed very sparse, so this is very useful. The beauty of Julia is that AD is very transparent. You just make a type change and you essentially have it, but not only that. So we have here our forward first order type. We can create a first order type using the forward diff dual numbers. We can even create a second order type by just sticking in the first order type into uh, the dual numbers again. So we have a second order type if we want to compute hashians for our optimization problem. And we can just um, put that type then into a vector or into a CUDA vector and we have a GPU implementation, which is really great and made possible by this awesome package, uh, CUDA.jl. CUDA.jl also implements uh, a, a parallelization, so a, a CUDA kernel generation using the broadcast operator, which we also make heavy use of. This really makes it very easy to write uh, GPU implementations. So using that, we get the natural CMD parallelization on the GPU. So a vector that has only values now has also uh, elements for each color, or each direction that you compute, and we just can evaluate the Jacobian in one go by creating a type that has uh, a T1S type with C directions in the type. So computing the Jacobian is just a matter really of a type change. Uh, let's go to the preconditioner and start first, though, with an overview of the linear solvers. So the linear solvers, as I said before, in IPOP, there's MA27, MA57, and MUMS. There are also CUDA implementations for indefinite sparse uh, direct solvers uh, from sweet sparse, SPQR, and then the CUDA solvers. The CUDA solvers are very opaque. We don't know what they are actually doing. In fact, if you're depending on your structure of your problem and the size, it may as well just decide to run on the CPU. Then uh, for dense uh, systems, we have the very solid uh, BLAS and QBLAS. They are doing fine. And then if you have positive definite uh, matrices, uh, you can even use Cholmot or Sprawl assets. And uh, positive definite solvers on GPUs, at least from my experience, tend to scale better than indefinite solvers. Then uh, we want to go iterative solvers. So we have the two packages, iterative solvers and Krylov JL. Um, Krylov uh, JL works on the GPU. Uh, so you just stick in again a, a CU, a Q vector, and you can just run your GM REST on the GPU. Unfortunately, it does not have a BCG stab implementation. Iterative solver, unfortunately, you cannot just stick in a Q vector. So uh, uh, for the BICG step implementation, at least, so we wrote our own naive BICG step implementation based on the original paper of BICG step. And that would actually uh, just fine. Why did I go to the last page now? Hmm. Okay. So our preconditioner is built in uh, this way. We have our compressed Jacobian we do a block Jacobi, which is probably the simplest preconditioner, but on a GPU, you do it a bit different. You want to have really a lot of blocks. This is different from most Jacobi preconditioners written for CPUs. They have actually larger blocks, and you may even do distributed parallelism over these larger blocks. Now, we really want to have a lot of blocks. And uh, so we put those into the dense blocks and then use the batch inversion 
from Kublas that is available through CUDA.jl to invert these blocks. And this scales very well. It's just instantaneous if these blocks are very small. And then we put this again into, our pre into a sparse matrix, our preconditioner that we hand over to by CG step. Now, why are we using by CG step uh, here is because GMRES is much more sensitive to the uh, number of blocks in the preconditioner. So by CG step just works much better with this preconditioner. We have some more on that, but I cannot go into the detail of this right now. So we have a very small implementation of both for both CPU and GPUs in just 200 lines of code, which is very nice for us and it's not usual for C or C++ implementations. Now let's go to the results. So you can get our pack package on our team webpage, uh, Exanaut. We have also other research software there. Uh, we also provide Julia builds for Summit if you want to run uh, something on Summit. Summit is the current uh, biggest system. Uh, it's a petaflop machine. It's the biggest system in the US. Um, it has been surpassed by a system in Japan. Um, and it uses also GPUs, but NVIDIA GPUs. So we are able to run this code on Summit right now and just want to move later on once uh, similar packages for Intel and AMG architectures exist, we can just seamlessly move our code uh, to these other architectures, other GPU architectures. So you instantiate your package, get all the dependencies, and then you set the target, either CUDA or CPU. You uh, include your power flow example, and you uh, point it to a test case. So here's a 14 bus case, very small, but you can still run uh, your power flow using eight blocks, for instance, in the preconditioner, and then use by CG step as your solver. The first execution will, of course, be slow, and then the, the second one will be fast because all the compilation has taken place, uh, compilation and code generation. Now, for very big problems, so we use a 30,000 bus system, our target problem size will only be 70,000. So this is going through at our target problem size that we will actually be running in our ECP project for one optimal power flow scenario. We used a thousand blocks, so really a lot of blocks for the preconditioner. Our matrix uh, J, so the Jacobian is 57,000 by 57,000, then the block become 59 by 59, which is really small. And all our preconditioner together, all the blocks, thousand blocks together, only are like 25 megabytes big. So really small preconditioner. We use five gigabytes of memory, which is acceptable. And we expect that the future uh, GPUs would have 32 gigabytes, so even for 70,000 case, we would be here fine for uh, the power flow problem. The number of colors is uh, only 29, so your compressed Jacobian will be 57,000 by 29. And we use 3,000 by CG step iterations, which is really a lot. That's a lot of iterations, but the GPU is good as, as at doing matrix vector products, so this goes really fast on the GPU. As I said, our uh, target system is Summit. We have on our workstation the same GPU, so all that matters is what GPU you have. We have the NVIDIA Quadro GB100 uh, Volta GPU. Here are the results uh, verbose, but let me just go quickly through it. So we have our Newton, 4.8 seconds. Of that, the by CG step iterative solver takes 4.4 seconds. But uh, the preconditioner only takes 350 milliseconds, so it's really fast. And what is even more remarkable is that our G Jacobian on the GPU takes only 14.2 milliseconds. So computing this compressed Jacobian is also really fast. And that is all what we wanted to see. So the linear solver, we can probably still improve, but here the preconditioner and the Jacobian, that this is so fast, that is really good. As a comparison, if we use the CUDA solver, off-the-shelf CUDA solver, it's 10 seconds. If we use the SPA solver, which is probably AMFPAC, we get 3.4 seconds. So with 4.8 seconds, we're actually quite happy. Remember that we have to run on a GPU architecture. We actually don't have CPUs available. So anything that runs uh, halfway efficiently on a GPU is fine. And I think this looks good. If you optimize the by CG step a little bit more, we could even beat the spa solver on the CPU. So here is also then for the optimization, if you want to do optimization uh, based on the 9000 bus system uh, at that point, uh, then the Hessian has a size of 500 
8,000 by, so by half a million by half a million, and the compressed one, again, we have only 76 colors, so the compressed one is much smaller. And we can, again, effectively parallelize. But here, we then compute not all 76 directions at once, but we look what chunks uh, are best. We even tried larger ch chunks than 76 just to see what the speed would be. And it seems that the sweet spot is between 16 and 32 for both first order and second order, so for both Jacobian and Hessian. And actually, it seems that you get the, the, the second order for really nearly for free, although it should be a complexity higher. You get, um, you get the Hessian really fast compared to the Jacobian. We have 0.3 uh, milliseconds per color, and we expect that our final number of colors will only be, will not exceed 500, so we are well in the domain where this is a feasible solution for us for computing the Hessian for optimization on the GPU. Now, our conclusions and going forward, uh, we want to use this code uh, of the power flow in a, a reduced method, so the reduced gradient method, which is actually a very early way of solving optimal power flow, which was developed in the 60s, I believe. Um, so you use this uh, uh, XRPF for solving the constraints, and then you use an augmented Lagrangian on top to solve your optimal power flow and solve your inequality constraints, which are, of course, much harder. So we will see where we get with this. But having this implementation on the GPU is just something you don't want to waste and use in an uh, uh, optimization stop, step above. We have to rely on second order optimization and we are happy with the performance we get for computing the Hessians. So we don't see a problem there. And for optimal power flow, you probably have to use second order, first order optimization methods. We have tested uh, those in our projects. They just don't seem to be enough. Now, what we need uh, in Julia and where we uh, yeah, d want to move forward is a SIMD modeling framework. So in Jump currently, every variable is a scalar. And what you, you actually want is that every uh, variable becomes a vector. We try to develop a, a solver interface to our solver, so what will be then XR OPF, but also for high up to develop an MOI interface that uh, encapsulates that abstraction of having uh, vectors and this difference between uh, sparse and dense blocks. Then we also need, uh, so the exascale machines will come online next year and we'll, we will have to move to those architectures in uh, 22 or 23. So we hope that by then the support uh, that we have now for the CUDA architecture using CUDA JL will just also be available for the Intel and AMD architecture. We unfortunately don't have the manpower or the experience to push that uh, on, uh, on uh, on uh, our own, so we just hope that there will be, yeah, we will try to contribute there too and hope that there will be just as awesome work as has been done for CUDA-JL uh, for these architectures. We also look into other uh, decomposition methods to decompose at the algebra level or at the NLP level. All in all, we will probably go f uh, away from interior points since that leads to these very ill-conditioned sparse systems uh, indefinite systems, and we'll try to use augmented Lagrangian as this leads uh, to positive definite systems that are more amenable to GPUs. And our experience with Julia trying all this out uh, has been really great, and we will continue to use Julia in the project as a high-risk path and hope to push the development of Julia there. Um, probably next year, the talk will be more on augmented Lagrangian and domain decomposition. And this, what I have presented here, will be just one ingredient in, in, in all of that. Thank you very much.